Uh, kia ora everyone, uh, nā mahi nui ki a koutou, uh, nau mai haere mai uh, ki te uh, tēnei uh, kōrero, uh, ārā he tohu VR, uh, ko Jared Davidson tōko inga. Uh, I work at Archives New Zealand and I'll be running through the first part about the development of the he tohu VR and then I'll pass over to Renee who will talk about some of the virtual reality in practice and it's really nice to um, piggyback on that last presentation which talked a bit more about the tech itself. So hopefully everyone knows what He Tohu is, it's an exhibition hosted at the National Library, um, an Archives New Zealand exhibition uh, with the strap line, He Whakapapa Kōrero He Whenua Kura, so talking about our past to create a better future. Uh, we're blessed with this wonderful wakahuia, He Whakapapa Kōrero, the document room where three documents are on display, He Whakaputanga o Te Rangatiratanga o Nu Tirani, uh, also known as the Declaration of Independence of the United Tribes, uh, Te Tiriti o Waitangi and the 1893 Women's Suffrage Petition. It's an amazing space and it's been winning awards and um, it is a pretty special place to be there. Hopefully you've all been, if you haven't you've got about another 23 years to go because it's a permanent exhibition. Um, uh, this is He Whakaputanga being viewed um, Te Tiriti o Waitangi with some of the public programs groups that we take tours through. Um, and obviously the women's suffrage petition as well. Now that's all well and good, it's an amazing place to visit, um, but one thing that He Tohu is about is about increasing access and increasing learning for people. So what about all those kids who can't get to Wellington? Um, and keeping in mind that our target audience was 10 to 15 year olds. We also have um, an agreement, uh, Kawenata, with the Iwi Chairs Forum. So all throughout the development of He Tohu, we worked very closely with our Tiriti partners, and we had a commitment to them um, in a formal Kawenata to try and increase access for those tamariki who could not get to Wellington. So that's the problem that we had to face. How do we increase the access and enhance learning about these three um, mana taonga documents? Um, and honour our, our commitment and our tiriti relationship as well. We explored some various options, whether um, doing online things or taking document tables and placing them in museums, but we decided that we would go with the virtual reality experience of He Tohu. Um, and then be able to pilot that and run it um, in various places with people in partnership. Um, and we're also developing a mobile app as well. So um, the, the talk just before us talked a little bit about the technology and um, Renee and, and some of the slides will talk more about the tech. I was more involved in the creation and the um, curation of the project as well. So we, we wanted to basically go for the highest quality possible um, experience that we could because these are pretty important taonga and with a very important history. So we wanted to maintain the quality and integrity of, of the exhibition. Um, so we worked quite closely um, with educators and Tainui Stevens of Māori Land Film Festival in Ōtaki, if you haven't been, make sure you go, um, and developed a bit of a script so that the, the virtual reality experience as our previous speakers said, if you haven't done it before, it can be a bit disorientating. So we basically created two versions, a bit of a curated experience um, and also a bit more of a free roaming one that educators like Renee can work with. We wanted a, a soundtrack as well, and so we worked with Alistair Fraser and Ariana Tikau um, to uh, create the appropriate soundtrack um, for the experience as well. And importantly, to honour the relationship that He Tohu went through, uh, the experience can be um, done in both Te Reo Māori and Te Reo Pākehā. And so we worked with Lionel Wellington, a young actor, um, with our director Māori engagement um, to create an appropriate Te Reo Māori experience. Interestingly, the process for that, we had quite a formal script and it didn't really work. Uh, the literal translation of the English, so they developed a much more intuitive and user-friendly type of um, chord at all, which was great. So we partnered with Mixed Studios here in Wellington to create this, um, and what they did was use photogrammetry to take thousands upon thousands of photographs of the wakahuia. And you can see here, here's an example of some of those photographs being um, mish, mixed and mashed up so that when you're in the experience you get a full 3D 
um, version of it as well. We also supplied um, some of the high-risk scans from Hitohu, the documents themselves. Here's the Waikatu Manako sheet um, being kind of broken up and then being readied for the internal experience of Hitohu. And again, this is shooting um, Lionel Wellington with uh, the green string and then some of the testing at Mix Studios as well. Do have a bit of a video. There is a longer video online which you can go to um, through Archives New Zealand. And this is Anton from Mix talking a bit more about the, um, the tech. Our team took thousands of photos of the Wakahuia and documents and using advanced processing technology, we were able to stitch these together to create an accurate 3D model and 8K textures. The time and attention put into making this resulted in a hyper-realistic experience. We developed this using the Unreal Game Engine and recorded our presenter in both Te Reo and English using binaural audio capture. Users can choose between their language and navigate around the experience using their controller. The experience was built for the HTC Vive Pro with wireless adapters, so no more tangled cords. Combining this state-of-the-art technology with our high-quality capture, users can get closer to the documents than they can in real life. We now have this incredible tool with a combination of music, story and narration that encourages users to immerse themselves in the tour to learn and discover. This has resulted in an engaging and educational trip that can be taken at the user's pace. The feedback is that people love it. We've been able to take this special exhibition on the road and share the importance of these documents. We look forward to bringing He Tohu to more places throughout New Zealand through the virtual reality experience. Nō reira tātou ko hui hui mai nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. It's obviously very hard to demonstrate virtual reality when you're not in virtual reality, but hopefully you saw in that video some of the screenshots um, using the 8K texture of the very high quality experience. Um, that's just the URL to watch the full video on our uh, YouTube channel. It was a very interesting process taking these taonga in a physical um, space into the virtual reality space, but it has been a very positive experience. Um, a lot of people who um, couldn't get up close and personal to the documents, say in the, the actual experience, um, because of the glass cabinets obviously, really found the, the virtual reality quite interesting and could really get up to the, the tohu or the marks of their signatures of um, tūpuna or ancestors, which was very interesting as well. So we built this technology and as Hugh Carden has said, um, we've started to think about where we can um, partner and take this. And the first place it went to was uh, He Tohu Tāmaki, the National Library in um, Tāmaki, Makoto in Auckland. So I'm going to hand over to Ray, Renee now to kind of talk about the He Tohu uh, VR in practice. Cool. Sorry. Thanks, Jared. Um, as Jared mentioned, we did decide to pilot this in Hitohu Tamaki. So, as part of that, what we really, the first thing that we came up with is that we really needed to contextualize the learning that goes around it. So, it couldn't just be it on itself. And one of the things that we did is we partnered with Ngāti Whātou Ōrāki um, in co-designing the learning environment that would surround this because we are wanting to educate both teachers um, and also kids in this space around these really important documents. Um, and we had to have that context in which the Hitohu VR would sit. Um, and so this was at the opening, and it was really a, it really was a, I suppose, a joint partnership in the design of the space. Um, you'll see some of the images um, in the background there were images that were, were chosen uh, in collaboration or in partnership with Ngāti Whātou Ōraki. Really, we wanted to tell some of those local stories that relate to um, the three documents around Hitohu Tamaki, and we had the, that as a grounding um, space. Um, what it looks like, though, in practice when we get kids in there, we've got two um, VR systems set up. We're using the expensive one that the guys were showing earlier um, in the previous presentation, um, and they are wireless, and we've got two areas set up, I don't know if I can get a little laser, and basically it's in a three metre square on both sides of the room. And so what we've done is we've set it up because it is one of the challenges that we had with VR is it's a very individual activity. You've got a one-on-one, -on -one. it's a one person looking at 
the screen in the VR headset. We've done some sort of little hacks with that and ways to get around that. Um, but really, it, in a nutshell, it does come to one-to-one. -to -one. So we had to work out how we could manage large groups of students. This is a very large group of students that we did run through an education program. And so what we did was we created a whole lot of learning activities that go around the side of that as well. Um, when it comes to working with the kids in VR, we went with a slightly older group and we sort of put a limit, um, the last group or the last presentation said they put the limit at five. We went for a little bit older at around about eight. So we, eight was sort of, and also depending on the size of the kids as well, because the headset is quite large with the, um, the high tech one um, and it is quite heavy. So they need to be able to fit it on and they don't want to fall over with it. Um, and this is Sandy going out, and this is a lovely picture of me, but you'll see in the background there is what we have is with the kids, what we'll do is we'll have one kid going through the VR experience and then I'll be hopefully also a facilitator will be working with the other kids and just showing them actually what the other person is, is, is seeing on the large screen. But it's not quite the same unless you're actually in that experience. We had to sort of come up with a way to, the whole experience takes around about six minutes in total to go through. Um, and really what we had to do is work out ways that we could hack it because we we're using the narrated version. So you go from one document to the next or one sheet to the next. And we came up with a methodology for actually getting these kids to experience it, have a look at it, get down, get really up and close to the documents themselves and have a little story or a narration that sat around that. And then that would be tied into some of the learning activities that would happen afterwards. Um, Again, going through just some of the, uh, the images, um, it really is quite a, it requires facilitation. It's not just a learning experience that is just set up and go. What, it, what we've found is to really get the nutrition or whatever with regards to what's needed for a true good learning experience, we really needed to make sure that you know, that there was that facilitation that sat around it. One of the things that did come up actually with regards to the learning space is when we were talking to Ngāti Whātua Ōraki is one of their desires was to have the learning space as a safe place to have some of these difficult dis discussions around Te Tiriti, Te Hifakapatanga and the Women's Suffrage Petition. And it came to, we, we did have some images of protest that were suggesting it as the first images that came through the door, but they did really ask that we reconsider that and we ended up, actually one, I used one of my images, um, of a wiper pass stream um, which flows through the area um, that, that the National Library is um, located. And what that really did was that gives that grounding of water, of why, and really made it into a safe space to actually, actually this is sort of the, the, the tone that we're going to have these discussions is actually let's just ground, it's okay, it's, and it is a safe place to have these discussions with the kids. The feedback that we've had from the kids, um, oh sorry I'll just bring it up on my computer because it's not on this presentation, um, has been quite interesting in the teachers, um, we are taking teachers through this as well, so we're running sessions at the moment around teaching to Tiriti, um, to directly to teachers, um, and that's been quite successful at this stage. Um, but one of the key things is that, that the feedback that's come back from the teachers is VR is seen as a way of engaging the students with the three of the key culture and heritage taonga. Um, it allows children to experience 3D and adds another dimension to learning. Um, that was from the deaf education teachers and it really is, what we're finding is that is a real target audience is, is kids with learning needs or difficulties or disabilities, they are really engaging with it because it does put them in an immersive sense and it does touch onto the other senses. Um, real life experience, it makes the documents real for students and makes the treaty more real and physical. And um, excellent as an innovative learning tool. Um, VR is very cool and makes info much more accessible. Um, was very cool how you could go right up close to the documents. One of my favourite stages in the narrated type 
thing that we're getting this, the students to do is when we come to the women's suffrage petition is because you can actually get down on the ground and really look at the size of the role. So we do get kids like crawling on the ground, having a look at actually the size, trying to touch the top. Um, and it really is quite getting them to engage with their bodies and try and understand actually the size or the significance and scale of that document. Um, being able to see the actual documents without the cost of going to Wellington. And that was definitely part of our thought basis around that is to try and make that more accessible to kids um, and to teachers and to general public. We are extending this beyond teachers as well. We've been approached by the University of Auckland, um, by the business school and uh, later this month we're going to have the first of about six or seven sessions. Um, so we're actually taking all 300 of their university staff through a um, learning experience based around if and that's really to place grounding because what the university is doing is they're wanting all of their faculties to incorporate to Tiriti properly into their curriculum and the way they teach. The challenge that they faced is that around about 70 odd percent or more of their lecturers, especially in the business schools, are not from New Zealand. Um, and then the ones that are from New Zealand are also facing, you know, that have a view of Te Tiriti. And so what we're doing is we're trying to come in and use this experience as sort of like a grounding for them to then carry on some professional development for their educators. Um, but and that's sort of what this really does and that's what I've found with regards to the VR is it is that opportunity to actually ground yourself about the discussions that are about to happen. Right? So it's really putting you in touch almost physically in a sort of virtual way with the documents that are sort of a really good discussion point to have with kids and educators. Um, as Jared mentioned, we do have an app, hopefully that's coming out soon, um, and that's going to make it more accessible again. Um, so that's going to be a VR app that won't require glasses, but a 360 degree view where you can actually access the documents from anyone with an iOS device or an Android device. The issue around that or the challenge that's going to be around that is how do we contextualise it? And that's great, it's going to give people access to it, but how do we contextualise the learning and the other things around that? And that's something that we're continuing to work with. We've developed a number of learning activities that go alongside this that educators can use um, around not just the VR, but also around just the three foundation documents themselves anyway. Um, the, that's not the right one. Um, so, yeah, the app is going to come soon. Um, so, we're going to open it up to some questions because that's how we're going to roll. Um, so, does anyone have any questions about it? Deathly silence. I think Renee's point about having some context around it is really important because the last thing He Tohu Wellington wanted to do was just go somewhere else and plonk it down and be like, hey, here's a cool thing, and it's all about Wellington. Um, so working with Ngāti Fato or Rake was a really nice experience, and we hope that this might lead to some further other relationships, whether it's uh, at Tūranga Library or, um, you know, we now know that Pukyariki has a full suite of VR, so what's the Taranaki story around these three taonga? So that's, I think, how we're treating this this technology is to enable some of that um, wider context, that wider discussion as well. Um, yeah. Can I ask um, technical elements to um, choosing the VR and also sourcing the company or who would developer? What kind of process did you go through in, in seeing who could do this in New Zealand and, and, and did it, you know, did you have conversations with a number of potential um, um, producers or was there an obvious fit immediately? And, and within the context, the overall context, because you've got to have a sensitivity towards the material, yeah. how did you get that across to, to, to them as, uh, in, in partnership with producers? Yeah, yeah, it's a very good question, definitely. Um, Mix Studios is here in Wellington, so that was helpful. We happen to have Laureen Jones, who's the project manager of Hitohu, in the audience. Do you want to answer that question? Or? Hi. Um, kia ora. 
Um, there was a project in Wellington with other people who had developed um, VR of various venues in Wellington. What was it called again? Pos uh, positively Wellington. Virtual no. Wellington or virtual Wellington, Wellington something like that, as a promo put on um, by Positively Wellington. So we were part of that. They chose Te Papa and us and a few other venues and uh, did various versions of VR and put that together. So Mixed had already been and worked with us as part of that partnership. Um, and so they had already done the first round of the work. So then we got a, a better build done through them and we've used it in various ways since and we're, we're now we're using it as part of the app. What were your other questions there? Um, I think it was just in relation to um, you know, ensuring that the context and how it was managed in creating the VR um, around um, you know, your sensitivities towards Hetoku and, and the, the, the documents, you know, um, is there a level yeah. of consultation? I'll, with yeah. I'll pass it back to Jared because he was the curator and, and there was a whole team of us working on it from various um, fields. Yeah, that's a good point. There's obviously, a lot more people behind the scenes. Um, that Kawanata was very important um, and obviously any discussions about the development of uh, Hetohu um, and various products or experiences had to go through quite a rigorous process. Um, we've maintained that relationship with the iwi chairs um, and obviously working with Ngāti Whātua Ōrāke as well, it took time to make sure we we're building that relationship and um, ensuring that the Tāmaki Hitohu story was an equal part of that as well. Um, luckily, I think Hitohu right from the beginning has had that type of working ingrained, um, so it wasn't a, a new thing to do, it, it just felt normal. Um, of course, relationships take time, um, and so the, the opening of the pilot in Tāmaki was um, pushed back, but that's important too, because to honour as you say, those the context and the importance of the documents and the tohu in there, um, it was important to do the right thing. And just and just on that note, though, and we initially decided to engage just with Ngāti Whātua Ōrāke um, in the first instance because there are 14 iwi that we do need to engage with up in Tāmaki. Um, to, we engage with them just simply because we are on that land and we're on the land that belong to them but the intention is is next as we start going to other iwi start having those conversations start surfacing their stories that they want told as well so this is not a static thing so it's around those bringing those additional contexts around and the additional stories and histories of tamaki as a whole and starting to construct that but we started first initially with Ngāti Whātua Ōrāke and then we hope to move on to Ngāti Pō, Ngāti Manahuri and the others as well um, as, as time goes on to start collecting those stories because that's something Ngāti Whātua were very um, explicit about was that they could tell their story and, and absolutely 100% they were telling their story and working with us to tell that story. It's then up to us to then go up and start bridging the, the relationships with other iwi and other interested parties like women's groups as well, around what other stories do we want told. And we really did make, and I always loved the, the, the description that Jared always used, is we set the stage up there to tell the stories, and then we start, you know, and that's what we are starting to do, is starting to set that stage to have those discussions. Just on from that, because you're also trying to collect stories of the secretaries on the suffrage petition, is there anything in the VR experience trying to capture that as well? There's, um, there, there are plans and you know ideas that you could totally expand the learning with the VR. So you know you could actually build in hyperlinks, and when you look at the document, a signature might come up, and then photos might come in, or you might jump off to that biography that's been crowdsourced. So there is the potential for for doing that in VR, um, and, and that's something we'd like to explore as well. Yeah. One, one of the challenges we did have with the VR um, and the suffrage petition in particular is that the um, photographs were taken at a point in time. Um, so we are stuck on those sheets in Timaru um, for, for indefinitely. Um, so one of the things we're looking at is other ways to actually surface on other interactives in the space, um, other you know the other parts of the, the suffrage petition and also looking at ways we could perhaps you know tie into that sort of thing as well. 
only it was on Hitoho, if it was on the tamaki sheet when they took the photos, it would be great, <laughs> but that's right. We just have to show it in Timaru. Cool. Good, uh, thank you, everyone. Cool, thank you. So we're breaking now for afternoon tea, and then we're back down to selling theaters for the final part of the forum. But if you want to give these guys a hand, 